Marcy Klein intro. Marcy Dana? Klein, just for everyone who's about uh -huh. to hear this podcast. Yeah. Marcy Klein was a very important figure at SNL for many decades as a producer, uh, kind of Lauren's right hand woman, mm -hmm. and was talent management and guest management. And she has some amazing stories. She's really funny and uh, just fun to hang out with and fun to have dinner with. Yeah. You know, we, I think we used her. She, Asked about it. She said, if you guys want to talk to me because I hear my name, we we throw it in casually. Like Norm was back there. Marcy brought her out. You know, mm -hmm. Marcy brought us in. Yeah. She brings you to see the host when they need the host. If the host is bored, she walks in. Spade, Sharon Stone's in there. Go, go, go. Say something. All right, all right. And then you go in there and she doesn't want to talk and to she'll, you. And she'll tell some stories about that inside baseball. She won't mention the name, but it's like five minutes before the air show and goes into the dressing room and the person's like, I just can't go on it's tonight. Balling. There's no way I could make it. Yeah. Yeah. And she has to figure out the psychological jujitsu to get this person ready to do 90 minutes of live stand up. Yeah. So she had a lot of funny stories. It's a lot of inside how people got on auditions, uh, how they pick. Uh, very interesting. It, she was there my whole run. I think your whole run too. Oh yeah, she was. I mean, I I knew her, which we we talk about when I did Brown University as a stand up, and she was in the front row, and something funny happens. Oh, there. that's right. Then we talked about that. So I knew her from that, and all of a sudden she's at the show, and she has a very famous dad. I just didn't have any idea. And she's running the talent department, and uh, mm -hmm. she was sort of a scout also. She had a lot of different. Uh, she would look at the old VHS tapes and shit. And she would just hang out with us, yeah. all all the uh, cast members. She was just our mascot. Uh, actually, Will told me I used to go, let's go down to Wally and Joseph's when he was, we had our overlap. Wally here. and Joseph. That's a good place. We used to all go. Uh, okay. Here she is. Marcy. Enjoy. Marcy. Klein. There was an amazing guy that he brought when he hosted that was a, like, guy that like I can't explain who he was but I was like David that guy's amazing he was like a chiropractor do you know who when I'm you hosted about? David did you bring a chiropractor to the show oh maybe I brought yeah, a movie what a movie star traveling with a team <laughs> <laughs> it didn't yeah. help by the way Marcy do you remember hi Marcy hi David do you remember when I got sick when I hosted <laughs> yes I don't know if Dana remembers this I will refresh your memory. What What are we Dana. talking? The early knots or past two ten? The middle knots. I think I hosted. Maybe it's the second time. How whatever. How many times like, did you host? I only did two. Whoops! I did three. You guys all tried to blackball me. No, I'm kidding. I only did two, <laughs> but they were fucking terrifying. And it's so much harder because when I was on, I didn't have. I was never in like a ton of sketches like Dana. So. When no, I'm on. Phil was in a lot of sketches. Hosting is a motherfucker. Oh, yeah. it's so brutal. That's 13 sketches yeah, in the cold you, opening right. and some Signorelli Did Marcy shit. hold your hand that week? Were you you around or you working on 30 Rock at that I point? I feel like, like, no, I feel like when David, maybe when you hosted, I was like, oh, I can take the week off. You yeah. Know what I mean, like it's, there, there's nothing better than ex former cast members that come back. Yeah. You knew this. Yeah. Right? Yeah. He, see you at the party. Yeah, you're like, you know the drill, you know, I know read through, I know when it's going to be hard. But, but I even when we did spend time together that first, because I remember you hosting and thinking that was a big deal. Mm -hmm. I think what happened you were was stressed out. Dana, when he hosted, was not stressed out. Um, well, in the 90s, I was. When I came back in 2010, I was too, uh, you know, you're living up to the past and you can't. Where's the Pepper Boy sketch? You know, it's like, you know what I mean? It's like you, you put a little pressure on yourself. But David's always calm and cool. Didn't you do a uh, character? What was the character that um, the guy who did the dance with Will Ferrell? Sorry, I'm, it was Chris Kattan. He had that little oh, funny. Oh, I did Mango and Kiwi. Yeah. Mango. And you wore oh, shorts. Yeah. And I go, God, a guy has really muscular legs. And that's been your your legacy. I should <laughs> never not wear shorts because it was a, that it was was a big hit. was Oh, the letters that came in. Here's what happened, though. Dana, I do I do dress, and I, I'm sure it was Marcy who was there because she probably came when I retell this, I say it was Marcy. For people that don't know, Marcy was the ta she ran the talent there producer for years. She and years was and years. Uh, she was for uh, probably at least twenty years. She was going into a room with a scared movie star or athlete <laughs> who said, "I just can't go on tonight. It's like eleven yeah. twenty. 
And Marcy's job was to get them out of that room so they go out for the right. monologues. Anyway, we'll get Marcy back to would that. go, listen, you quit and we fire you. And they're like, wait, what? Uh, uh, they're going to so take anyway, my I, children away. Now get your ass out there. I'm doing um, one of my hilarious bits, but I'm in so many things. And Spade's very fragile, like powder. So is Carvey. And so, what about you, Klein? So I'm doing like a nine hour dress, Dana. And we're about <laughs> yeah. almost, we're probably to the last two sketches. And it's like 10, 50. I was... <laughs> either it was food or it was stress or I wasn't feeling yes. good and I was sick and I'm like and I'm just sitting in a sketch and you know right when the, right when the sketch is over they go okay run over here you know you got 30 seconds and I just sat there in the sketch and I think it was Marcy came over, Spade let's go and I, I go and all the customers are waiting and then I just laid down in front of the sketch and they go what the fuck's going on and Marcy's Whoa. like hold hold tell them to hold <laughs> and so they bring me in the dressing room. Hold, was this a rehearsal or the air show? It was a dress, dress which okay. is still a full no, audience. No, it's embarrassing. And Hold dress. I'm, <laughs> oh, I go in the bathroom and I'm laying there and it's coming out both ends. I'm laying on the floor. Ew. I'm like, do I have food poisoning from Huxley's or what? Well, because I always tell the host never eat. They're like, I'll have sushi. <laughs> I was like, don't have sushi before the fucking live. I'll show. have the scariest thing to eat possible. Uh, nothing for me, just these Vietnamese uh, egg rolls will do. <laughs> and you're like, oh, I wouldn't eat that before. So I am laying on the floor, Dana, freaking and out. Marcy comes drenched. over. And Marcy's at the door, and I hear Lauren, Lauren what, what's happening? And, uh, and she talks she goes, like Lauren. Just doing, <laughs> oh, that was no, Lauren, Lauren came Lauren up and came asked in? her. Okay. <laughs> and, and I just hear on the other side of the door, I'm laying face down in my bathroom going, <sighs> like, Jeez. I don't even want to. And why didn't you get asked to go back for a third time hosting? No, uh, you know what? <laughs> and I didn't sue them. No, but what happened is I was just either <laughs> overstressed or I didn't eat, and it was too much pressure. And then after I sort of got everything out of my system, I could feel myself lightening up going, okay, I feel better. And then I think Marcy and Lauren, this sounds like a lot, but I think they were saying, what do we do? Because we have to tell NBC if we're going to run a rerun tonight. Right, right, right. Or like and you might the, not be able to make it. Teresa, yeah. the nurse who is still. Oh, yes. Yes. And Tr Teresa. Person. Yeah, I just ran into her. I'm at NBC right oh, now. Oh, is she around? To Teresa, right? Yeah, she helped I me. Saw when her I saw last I, time I did Fallon. I could text her to come up to discuss it. Well, because... we could talk about when I separated my shoulder, but let's go back to him. Did you rally? Or what? Think, Mike Myers, you know, did, have you guys had Mike on? Oh, yet? yeah. Yeah. Mike was violently ill. Do you remember? Yes, that there was a show where he was truly. In Wayne's World. Yes, yes, really he violently. He growing up like behind the set. Right before he came out. Oh, yeah. It, it, I thought it was Philip and he pooped in the bathtub. But I uh, he posted and he was sick too. David, are you trying to be Mike Mike? I'm, <laughs> I'm trying to be exact. <laughs> I'm stealing his story. You're, you're so sicker I than feel, Mike Myers. This is going to trend by tomorrow. The way, Marcy, I'm like laying there in like a UPS outfit because I'm in whatever sketch, you know. So then I get my <laughs> act together. And I, Harrigan, a lot of people don't feel great. Before. Sure. I should be a seasoned vet, though. I should be the last no, one, of course, that you need to worry not, about. Hosting's a marathon. Used to pass out at the read-through a lot. You know what I mean? Come on. I didn't like it. I'd have <laughs> spaghetti brought into the read-through at the break. And then I just sit there and go, go ahead, Tom Hanks. You just yeah. reminded me that I used to order the food for read through. That yeah. was like another one of my jobs. Remember, I used to like, I almost was, um, I got the cars for the cast. Oh, you yeah. were a, a Friday night. Yeah, like five jobs. It seemed like you yeah, were everything. kind of, I used to think you were just like everywhere. You were holding the hand, you were hanging out with us. What? I you hung were, out with your moms. Remember the Mother's hang out, Day? No, the took Mother's care Day of the moms. episode. Yep. I took them out. That was a fun week. Took my mom to Chippendales. I just saw Rose Rock. Um, Rose Rock. Rose Rock. I just saw Rose at Radio City. When oh, I, you saw Chris? Yeah. And Chris and I just went on Sunday to see Tar. Have you seen Tar? 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 Spade, you wouldn't get it. Is it a movie, a play, <laughs> or is it's it? It's with Kate Blanchett, my celebrity crush. Oh, it's a great, it's a yeah. play. That's brilliant, right? Because No, no, it's a movie. No, it's a, a movie. movie? It's a masterpiece. Is Dana, it on live streaming? Could I watch it right now in the corner of my laptop? It probably will be. I mean, it's a very, it's like a almost three hour movie. I see it. I'm going to have the sound off, but I'm just going to let it run there. Has she talking. hosted? Wait one second. Um, I keep hearing a ding and I think it's coming from.
my computer and I'm trying to oh, do you guys hear stop that? notifications. It might be your emails or something. We're not hearing it. It's I had that. You go into notifications <laughs> anyway. No, I guess it's I mean, is it gonna annoy you? Well just just keeps... pretend you're baking a cake and okay, you're if you guys haven't heard it, then maybe it's only on my end. Yeah, it's not. It's it's fine. It's it's a ca- right, it's we don't fine. have we have yeah. a very low budget podcast. It's okay. Our technical <laughs> it's resume, is, we barely okay. make it. I don't even know if I'm recording. Yes, I am, Dana. I'll just tell you that. Bo- the end of the story is I drag myself back up. I finish the UPS sketch. Those people have been there for 25 minutes. I wow. do it. I give it absolutely nothing. The poor writers are like, well, that one's not going to make it. And then <laughs> I do one more sketch, skate through, and then we get ready for mm-hmm. air and. uh Everything was fine after that, but I swear it was touch and go. And I remember Marcy. Marcy, you were there from the very, very beginning for me, for yes, sure, I, I think, right? I remember when Dana brought you in and you sat on the couch oh. outside of the talent department waiting to meet with Lauren on oh. 17 in front of the microwave oven, which is where, where my desk used to be. Because I knew David oh, before right. SNL and, yes, and in the club, brought, so I brought, I brought him in. I, and he actually th- passed out the same way with the UPS story. <laughs> he just went down. And I go, hold, but just Marcy. I passed out her every day. Tell Lauren, <laughs> can, you go, can we get 10? And, you know, Marcy's a champ, always cool under pressure. But, um, yeah, you have an yeah, amazing. Was, that was like on a Friday night. Yeah, no, I, I who was I talking to? Marcy I, goes, Lauren will be with you in three to seven hours. Just relax. <laughs> I'm like, what, what's that? Lauren will be well, with you next Thursday. <laughs> you have it to was, wait here. It was weird that you were meeting him on 17. It must have been like a Tuesday night because there's, I would have not been, it was up on 17. David, do you remember this? I don't remember meeting Lauren outside of 17. I, I, I would I always. Just hanging out. I just remember thinking Dana is here with some guy I've never met. And I was trying to, you, you appeared and then you, I don't remember how you got on the show, but I know it was. Yeah, I feel like well, Dana and Dennis helped. Um, and then I had the audition. Were you at the audition for me? That's a good question. Well, I was at, I was at the That's great question. Adam. Oh, Rob Schneider. Um, Chris Rock was with Adam, wasn't he? Chris, Chris Rock and Farley came. They started together. Oh yeah. They came later. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, they, and did they come later or before? Well, we brought, I, they came before you. No, Rob and I got the last four episodes of a year right. so we finished right. a season that's right when we came back they picked us up as writer performers and then rock and farley were joined so they that's were the right. first read through that's right that's right i remember that yeah I they knew. were full feature and we were i think writer features and then sandler came about two three months after that. Right. and there there was the, oh yeah, that, yeah. the bad boys and arrived I felt like it was like they were leaving right wasn't that the whole thing that was, I started in 89. <laughs> I remember. And uh, do you, do, can I tell the story how, that when I went to Brown oh, University and then you, I know, I know. So yeah, I, I mean. <laughs> that was the funniest, best story ever. Tell it. Was I, it just be, I was playing the college, you know, and I was doing my act and, and Marcy sat up front. She had this incredibly crazy hair, like just gigantic thick hair. I don't know if you were laughing very hard or or talking to me I or was something. Like, you know, everyone was obsessed with Dana and every, no one could believe you were there. And, and I was like front and center. And I felt like we had eye contact and my hair must have been because my hair was so big. And yeah. Like, Who is that? And I use the old comedian trick of calling you big hair woman. And then you call it back. What do you say, big hair woman? So you became the co-star of that set. And then I don't know if it was like six months later or whatever. All of a sudden I see you walking around 8H. It's like big hair woman's here. (laughs) And and I was like, wait, do you remember that? that?" And he said he remembered. And of course, I don't really know. At the time, I was like, wow, he really remembered that. Oh, yeah. But obviously that was just shtick. And that you didn't remember me. Oh, I did remember that. Oh, yeah. I didn't do that yeah. many colleges, and I remember and you did have big hair. Where there was well, a I, woman with giant hair, and I called her big hair woman. I don't know. I did other things with the audience, like you know, orange coat man. Spade does it too. Yeah, and you refer, I did but, shorts guy the other night. This guy did shorts. And I you go, called shorts him shorts guy. guy. What are you yeah, so yeah. you were big hair woman. So I did remember it, and you were front and center. You're kind of almost in the light. So I remember what I you was. looked like, and then you when did you came tease on SM, it up. It had a little Bon Jovi to it. I didn't have to tease it up. It was it was, it was, was just big. Big. I probably did tease it up. 
back then. Well, you know, it's it was just a lot of hair. It's a university we're all over thing. the place, but that's sort of how we Dennis are. Miller called me hair too. I, that was like my name. That's for a while. Hey, hair, come over here. Okay, can <laughs> yeah, we get, he, get some yeah, orange uh, sun kiss kind of deal down here if you don't mind? Hey, Spudley, wouldn't kill you to write some update jokes. Slide them under my desk. We love Dennis. No, slide them <laughs> under my door. Let's no, uh, let's for a second, whatever. I'll do some housekeeping for people who are listening. Okay. This is Marcy Klein. She yep. is an Emmy Award winner. I think Alec Baldwin would call you the greatest uh, producer in the history of broadcast television. She produced Thirty Rock, and then she was ubiquitous. She was everywhere on Saturday Night Live for like twenty years, and she 25. did twenty five years, and she did every kind oh. of job. And I remember as just just. Doing a lot of things. She wasn't like a handyman, but she was. She was a producer. well. She did fix my sink. At anyway, she had a toolkit. She did drywall my office. Yeah, completely. I called her toolkit after done that. And everything except be a cast member. Yeah, but okay. I've been an extra. Okay, I'll do. I'll cut to it like a Barbara Walters. Who is the craziest host? <laughs> that what, was, did Lauren, what did Lauren say when you asked him? Did we ask him craziest host, David? Um, no, because uh, he—I don't, I don't think, think he would ever say. I, I always get hurt. I, 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 there were there I'm were ever. some. I, I wouldn't yeah. use the word crazy, but uh, some were a more uh, heavily maintenance, you know, kind of thing. But <laughs> challenging. Everyone asked me, and I—I I, I just do Steven Seagal because I have a Steven Seagal bit, you know. But right. I don't say like I liked Steven Seagal actually. Me too. But I, even, I, and people well, get, no, right. That was a crazy week. I think yeah. it, that was a bizarre week. Because Nora she, left the show. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or no, and no, she also, she had left the show because of Dice Clay. Sorry. She left right. Dice Clay did, week. Did yeah. David, did you boycott the Steven Seagal show? I do, boycotted mostly because <laughs> of his ponytail. <laughs> but what was that week <laughs> like for you, Marcy? Were you in chat? Well, I, I, I just remember that he was weird about standing in the, the um in the set. Do you mm -hmm. remember this like when he was doing the sketch? He like he wanted to be outside mm -hmm. of the set. Yeah, and Jesus. Liz, Liz Welch, you know Liz, she, I remember. Yeah, I just was texting with Liz. She's so funny. She's so great. Stephen, you I, can't stand there. Yeah, yeah, Stephen, sweetie, <laughs> you know, she's so sweetie. You know, we need to. You know, like we were trying to sort of deal with him. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, looking back, like. He he just I I don't want to say anything more, but he it was a it was a, a a week that was one of my first weeks where I thought like oh not every week is the same and mm -hmm. it's different and you have to deal with them yeah he, but in the end it just was was it like I feel like Jim Downey was that was a difficult week for Jim oof as a head writer anyone that had to get right face to face with him and deal it's always tough when the host is a probably nervous which is understandable and b didn't want to be remember i just remember kung fu fighting like he didn't want to he, he goof we did the hans and franz thing fighting. where we made fun of him in the oh. read through arnold could beat you up you know your buttocks are like marshmallows and he just sat there and listened to <laughs> it, it. Didn't laugh. and then yeah. on the rehearsal stage didn't say anything for two days on thursday we're yeah. walking through it and then he goes way over. He leaves where we are at the center of 8H and moves like 100 feet away. He's just standing. Yes. And Kevin or maybe Marcy said, can you go talk to him? And I went over <laughs> there and he didn't even look at me. And he said, I just wish Arnold was here so I could kick his fucking ass. <laughs> so for two days he was stewing. And then we had to rewrite the thing. You're stronger than Arnold. And then I, I ran into Schwarzenegger <laughs> makes in, no sense. in Santa Monica. Six months <laughs> later, I said, Seagal says he wants to kick your ass. And he's with all his giant Austrian guys, a foot-long cigar. He leans back and goes, is that the fact? <laughs> so that's that was a, uh, he was eccentric. But I just liked his stories. It was all, he was talking about Russia and martial arts and conspiracy theories. I found him fascinating. Yeah. So yeah, 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 no, he was. That, that I, just reminded me of Sylvester Stallone, who's so nice. And I had yeah. to go to the set David, were you with me? I was. I didn't. There. I was there when I think he hosted. It was Adam McKay. Um, maybe I'm. 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 Were you there when Adam McKay was there, or that was after you left? I think he might have been. On, I, I should look. I I need a sheet. I was host. not. He might there. have been Will Ferrell's first year. I would have loved to have been there when he was hosting, but I, I was gone. He, it was. It was like I had to do like that. Um, you know, you watch it in the movies of you know, like 
talent people that try and sign, you know, hope, like I had to go to the movie <laughs> set and meet with him. And oh. I brought Adam McKay and I feel like I've might, maybe I brought Will Ferrell. I can't, we need Ayala here. Right. Ayala. But you remember oh going gosh. to the set to kind of uh, walk him through what SNL would be like to convince him. Yes. It was like, I had to sort of, you know, yeah. like host comes in and the first person they meet in, in when I first started, when, when, when you were there, when you, when, when I came, when you were already there, I would go to my first host was Dolly Parton. And I had to pick her up at the airport. Like she got wow. to me, oh. you know, like, hi. Um, and the airport pickups. I love it. Oh yeah. And that was for cell phones. God, they couldn't always, send a car. You had to drive to the airport. No, no, no. I was <laughs> Max, in the car. Yeah. Nice guys, Max. Max yeah. Um, I would, it was just a lot of like waiting around mm -hmm. and, and then eventually I, you know, so when, when the host comes in, I have to sort of explain everything that's going to happen. Yeah. Then Lorne sort of does that. He shortens that. Mm -hmm. when go in and it's before you know, the Monday meeting. Right. Exactly. Yeah. They meet first. And so with Sylvester Stallone, it was the first time where I think, I don't know if Fred Spector was his agent, whoever, whoever his agent was said, no, you have to go get convince Sly to do the show. <laughs> it's old school. He was the only one that was not just showing up because he was booked. Right. So he was shooting a movie here, Ray Liotta. I remember getting in trouble because I was Ray Liotta was like, she's in my fucking eye line. Like I, I was like, what are you? <laughs> wow. I, like, oh. Yeah, it was like, it <laughs> that's was. intense. And then eventually Ray Liotta hosted. But anyway, those mm. guys were all sort of similar not yeah. that well, maybe that's like, old school like come talk me into it come get me you know i yeah. need coaxing stallone is the nicest dude anyway he's the nicest yeah. and he, was, he wrote everyone thank you notes and he was so mm. nice and i didn't do that yeah yeah he's a total you he know down to earth guy still can not too late <laughs> hey <laughs> dear liz <laughs> how you all dear doing <laughs> you know <laughs> Yeah. Dear Audrey, Audrey Pert was there, Ken Amon, Audrey. Jim Henry. Mm. Yep. Ken Jim Henry sat me down to explain oh why I'm God, making Jim so Henry. little money. Jim Henry. Oh, oh. You come yeah, he was the business Jim affairs Henry. guy. Do you guys remember Andrew Brewer? Yeah, yes. we talked oh, yeah, about yeah. him. Yeah. He, 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 he emailed just, us a letter, didn't he? Or yeah. He, wrote, he yeah. emailed us a question. Yeah, because he says he's at a cafe in Barcelona or something. Yeah, yeah he's in Barcelona. Yeah, yeah. so we all those are old it was Old one pals. time, Marcy, when I said pussy on the air with Dennis at Update and Andrew Brewer, he said, you got to mumble it. And, and I walk off stage. He goes, what are you doing to me? He meets me right yeah, right so when I step true. off of Update. What are you doing? Spade, what are you doing? You're what going to get me fired. Me? We're all going down. That's like when, who smoked pot? Um, who was the band that they were smoking pot on stage? Uh, I'm going to guess Black Crow. Stone Temple Pilots. Do you no. remember, Marcy, I was upstairs and I did a joke where I said, Stone Temple Pilots, I liked them the first time I saw them yeah, yeah, yeah. when they were called Pearl Jam. I know. And then when they hosted, they said they want to kick my ass and they and then Marcy had to go down and, and they, yep. I always just picture you with a cigarette going, all right, listen, I'm going to go talk to them. All right, but do not come downstairs. Don't come down to eight. Stay on 17 until we figure this out. God, how many yeah. fires did you put out? I mean, my God. There, there, that's what Lauren always said. He's like, Marcy puts out fire. Anyway, putting out fires was always, I think that was something I'm proud of, you know, that I did that. That's important. That's a, a scary healthy. thing when someone's melting down or being a problem. You're walking to the door and you do the little knock and you don't know what you're going to find. Have you ever had anybody you came in and they got overtly hostile? Like, what the fuck yes. are you telling me? Yes. Um, was it David? I, um, <laughs> no, but uh, a very famous. Very famous uh -oh. um, woman. Woman? Glenn Close? Um, no. No, she Sharon Stone. Threw a boot at me, uh, one of her shoes at me when I had to tell her something that she didn't, didn't want to hear. hear. Um, Sharon I, Osborne would do that? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. I don't think I ever met Sharon Osborne. So they threw a boot at you with true anger and you, did you dodge it? I mean, did you like? Yeah, I, I understood her reaction, to be honest. You know, 
Gabriel Byrne, he hosted, were either of you there? I was there for that like, one. Yeah. He came up to me. I loved him. And at, at the he's, next he's week, cool. he was like, can I cut? He came back like the next Saturday and he grabbed me and he's like, so you, you do this every week, you know, like it, it, because you know what it's like when you come in there, mm-hmm. it's a machine and everything just, you yeah, know, it's, it's Monday, Tuesday, whatever. Working chaos. We yeah. We do dinner and then we did in the band and then the promos mm-hmm. and then the thing and everything. You go in the room, we eat, you know, the food on Friday, mm-hmm. we hang out, everyone, hang, you know, so I guess when that's why I believe SNL is still on, you know, because there's nothing else like it. And you, as a host and you, you come on, you're treated, no one in, I, I, maybe if you're shooting a movie, that's Dana, you guys would be able to know. I mean, isn't, don't you think this is like, there's nothing else like this where oh, you're yeah. like running your own show ish. No, there's nothing like Saturday Night Live, nothing. That's why it's the seminal experience for all of us. And uh, we are talking to Lorne about that, that because a lot of times you're getting movie stars or actors or non-comedians having to yep. suddenly come in and host yep. a comedy sketch show, there's a reality show as- aspect. To, so even if Saturday Night Live has a, a dud of a show, I yep. think it's almost more entertaining than when it kills <laughs> to see how yep. people react and everything, so... A hundred percent. The yeah. same amount of work goes into the ones that bomb. <laughs> that's the, that's like movies too. Well, I but remember you get- Mike Myers being really upset and I get it that we booked Nancy Kerrigan. And oh, like stunt casting because yeah. she ch- I hit the leg of the woman. Yeah. Well, it was the whole, ta- it was the her, whole. Yeah. And, um, and that was, that was, a uh, uh, like, you're talking about sports people that come on. I mean, there's that whole group of people. There's always, that is, that was, that happened before I was there. I mean, I was, but she, by the way, you weren't there for Nancy Kerrigan. No, I I was there. That was my idea. Mm -hmm. I booked Nancy Kerrigan. And and Mike thought it was stunt casting kind of, or. Well, he was right. I mean, yeah, I heard some grumblings, but but I was like, well, how come, you know, George Steinbrenner hosted? Well, how come Nancy, Kerrigan can't host. I don't understand. Yeah. What's the difference? And that's a bigger stunt. That's a New York stunt specific. Right. So maybe that was New York specific, which SNL was very New York specific. I remember when Nancy Kerrigan was fucking huge. And I was kind of bummed because it wasn't a great show. It was like dice. We got a big number and we just wasn't quite the show we wanted to show everyone. It's still amazing she showed up and she's so nice. And she that was a very like I was like, wow! I can't believe she's coming here and doing that. Well, her for her skate scene with Farley, where she was throwing her up in the air and skating with her, and Phil and I yes, were well, that were, was were, anything with that Farley. was a really funny sketch. That was really oh, memorable. God, that was so funny. I was there on that shoot. I went. Was that a on Rockefeller that Center? Yeah, it was at Rockefeller Center, but then it was also at like a, you know Sky Rink. There were two. I was oh, oh my god, and I was. So, so cool. I was like, can you do a triple act? And she was doing things for me. <laughs> Just like well, a little puppet. <laughs> can you do the thing well, where it's you magic spin around? when they do it? It's crazy how those, oh, yeah, spin those so giant good. heavy skates around yeah. whirling and then land it. But Chris could actually skate enough too because yeah. he grew up in Wisconsin, right? So, that was the right. funny that's the funniest surprise of the sketch is that he was actually good. Yeah. Yeah, and he's wearing a goofy outfit, and then of course he's falling, and then he's screaming, and then <laughs> yeah. throws her Wait a in minute. the air. Chris is falling and screaming, and it's hilarious. Was, yeah. that, was that before <laughs> or after the Chippendales? Oh, after. I think it must have been after because Chippendales was early on. I think yeah. Downey said it might have been his fir- fourth or yeah. fifth show. Mm-hmm. Yep, yep. Yeah, that was great. Another monster. Yeah. Did you have? Did you hear any f- blowback at Chippendales about? He didn't want to do it. I yeah, didn't hear that. Yeah, there's a big but... controversy. Was Chris being exploited or just being funny? And some some feel one way, some feel another. I mean, I remember ish that he. I don't feel like he felt that way. I didn't. I don't I didn't get that vibe yeah, either. So I thought know, he yeah. knew exactly. I mean, he would take off his all his clothes to walk into the rewrite. He was meeting, always so not it's naked, like, you know. <laughs> right. But it was always like. It, it was never in a, if, if I can say it was never inappropriate. But it, was, <laughs> <laughs> it was expected. It was, yeah, it was not, you know, it didn't feel, it wasn't threat. I wasn't, 
I, I've never felt threatened by Chris. Yeah. Well, because he, he was so, he was enjoying it so much and he was so joyous about it and so right, silly right. and cackling and he'd burst into the writer's room naked, kind of with his legs oh. crossed and then he'd do Thank a prat fall and then he would yeah. do that guttural, <laughs> you know, that, what, can you do it? His laugh, you know, just, that uh, was. You just, I just had a memory that I, I, I won't, say but i remember walking into his dressing room <clears throat> like Oops. by makeup on eight yeah and he was like mercy come in here like and i, I was like, <laughs> okay you know and then he did yeah. something he oh, did something like you cannot fucking do yeah, that yeah i know Let me sometimes he pushes his wiener part. in between and does like the bush shot he would do that the silence of the lambs he would do that about twice a week in different parts of the, the but there, were, there weren't that many of us, too. I mean, it, it seemed no. like there was like. Well, do you remember this, Marcy? And I know we're jumping around, of course, but that we never talk about on here. That was such a weird thing that I don't know if you kept doing, but Mohunk, we went. I was just going to bring Mohunk up to you. Yeah. The, the retreat, because by the way, I planned that was one. Was of that your idea? What Lauren said. We're going on a retreat. Lauren and Jim Downey wanted it's like to a movie a retreat. Yeah. So, and they were like, Marcy, you plan it. I planned the party. I mean, I was like, okay, I was 22. Yeah. I had just gotten there. And Aaron, I said to Aaron, Aaron Maroney, Aaron Maroney, I was like, you need to help me do that. I mean, what are we doing? <laughs> okay. Like, I'm, we're too young to do this. <laughs> well, just, <laughs> we get, well, just for what was the, just for a second, has there ever been a retreat before or after? With the whole cast of SNL, I never. That was the. It was a one-off. Did you have more? That than was one? the weirdest thing. So we all went to Mohawk. All the cast, I guess, the writers and and Marcy, go on, planned it. I guess, but we yeah, it was, a one -off. I, it was the cast and the writers, and like we had campfires, and then we had like parties, and it was like camp college. Yeah, um, it was. I I actually, Lori Joe has photos. I I think it was. It was, yeah, she does. Those are crazy. She, We're she, throwing the football around. Yeah, there was the football. And then we all, and I was thinking about that last night. I was like, God, Mohonk. Did, I think I we did it twice. We really? never, I ever talked about once, Mohonk on But this. I remember Lauren, Lauren did a some more demonstration. It's the proper way yeah. to make a some more. Everyone. It's about the graham crackers, marshmallow and chocolate. Marcy. You know. Kevin, are you looking? Kevin, you have to see it. Okay, Did we smash tell them ghost together. Stories and stuff. Pro like <laughs> Pro Lauren telling ghost stories. Probably Lauren telling ghost story. <laughs> it's that thing of like you want to open the closet door, but then again you don't want to open the closet door. You know? And then he said boo or something like that. <laughs> and you're running. Um, but how about this? Norm said. I think Norm was new, and he yeah. said that he got there. And it was like a big haunted place, like from The yeah, Shining no, or something. No, it was terrifying. Place. Together, yeah. And every time people talk about Long Island, I go, "Is that where we went from?" And you want to know what Mohonk is? Everyone's like, "No." Upstate I go, New York. Is it Montauk? Upstate, there, I I don't know where it is. We it's all had haunted be. experiences there. I I I did a movie there, and I had haunted experience. You guys have some weird poltergeist it was like stuff. The shining. Yeah, in my it room, I actually absolutely had a poltergeist experience it at was Mohonk. Terrifying, and I remember Aaron <laughs> sleep in my room like we were. It was very big and, and gothic and, and re yeah. Who picked the hotel? <laughs> Lauren, Lauren, oh, that Lauren was did. a okay. thing. Shelly it, Duvall. It's called Mohawk <laughs> Mountain House. And it was a place that someone, someone had done. Got killed at. Yeah, that was. A <laughs> yeah. Well, Marcy, look, Norm, Norm McDonald goes, he goes, when I got there, Farley goes, he because Norm was new. He goes. I have to tell you a secret, which is always a good Farley bit. He goes, come here, Norm. And he goes, we keep walking. And he goes, Norm, follow me down here. So they walk farther and he goes, then we go down a hall. Then we go down to the basement. Then he comes in a room and he closes the door and he goes, what Farley? He goes, Pat's a girl. <laughs> <laughs> so Chris went all that trouble. <laughs> yeah, he went all that way for a bit. <laughs> it's Pat. Uh, they, how funny. Oh, punk just reminded it's me. It's Pat was an old oh, sketch. You, were you there when I had to um, produce sort of like the Mohonk thing, the um, Mohegan Sun Casino Night? Were you guys no. involved in that? Oh, all right. was, that was a separate trip. It was your precious Jimmy Fallon and Tina Fey, maybe? Yeah. Hey, I, 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 a lot of years. Um, 
<laughs> no, it wasn't that it was, I, it was Dan Aykroyd. Not that I was in the seventies, but he, I, it, they brought in a bunch of SNL oh. former uh, mm. cast members. And maybe it was like, will that group? I can't remember. Hmm. Wow. But well, there's a whole other kind of version of Mohonk and but in a casino. In the I Mo- would rather do that. Uh, it was so, so would Norm, I'm sure. So also, uh, I don't we, we can go anywhere we want to go, but you also were part of like uh picking cast members, having a big influence seeing right. them audition. I was getting to that. Kinda, she discovered comedy superstars Molly Shannon, she Molly Shannon, Tracy Morgan, Fallon, Seth Meyers, Will Ferrell. Armisen, Catan, Daryl Hammond, Sarah Silverman. It says Kevin, Kevin James. James. <laughs> Kevin James for uh, the mall cop Kevin, movie. Uh, that's so funny because Kevin James, they uh, Stephen Colbert, Kevin James were my two. I kept saying, why are, can't we hire them? But Jim and Lauren, that didn't, you know. It didn't compute. Stephen Colbert was, um, he was the understudy when I went to Chicago before, yeah. like, Born and everybody would come. Mike Shoemaker. Have you had Mike Shoemaker on yet? No, we'd love Shroom, to. Shroom Taker. No. Um, we and I, I, I was there. Maybe it was with. It was just Mike. I think I, I remember mm-hmm. whoever I was going to see was sick and Stephen Colbert. It was uh, was, was the, the understudy and and I'm like that guy's really. Funny. It was Steve brought- Carell and then he understudied Steve Carell. Yes, and Steve was sick. Yes, yeah. look at that. Have you already heard this uh, story? I called him the two Steves. Remember when we put him on the show in 96? Because luckily SNL passed on them or at least didn't see them properly because yep. they were yep. brilliant at what they were doing. And also yeah. Bill Hader, Maya yep. Rudolph. Jason Sudeikis. Jason yeah, Anna Sudeikis Gassa. is on So them. who, well, I don't know. Here's like a, oh, yeah. uh, I mean, a question yeah, I mean. that's maybe Barbara Walters. Who was the who was the one you saw like they stepped out and you went holy shit not only should they be on SNL they're gonna kick ass yeah who's a clear star um wow other than all of them other than all of them everyone that obviously ends up on SNL stands out I mean there isn't anyone you know who there's something there it's a hard vetting process if you find your way into the inner sanctum you got some kind of chops because it's right difficult. I mean Jimmy and Seth both like I mean you know Seth I feel like he had the perfect audition he just nailed it and he didn't do impressions what does he do he or did he um he he had a pretty he good did. ear. I mean, if he wanted to do to. an impression, I think he did Hugh Grant. I remember because yes, I remember he does a few. I remember oh. that Ayala had seen him in Chicago, and she said, "You know, he's a great writer." That's what. She, and I said, "Well, he also is. He looks like he could be on TV. I mean, you know, yeah. more so than I could. You know, so I, it, and I said, no, we should put him." On like Tina Fey was the same thing. Everyone Scott adds it. I when I was in Chicago, he's like, he's the one who said Tina Fey is a brilliant genius, you know, and Scott adds it is so funny and so great. And and Scott adds it auditioned for SNL and, and didn't end up getting hired, but he kept saying Tina Fey, Tina Fey. And, and so Tina ended up being hired as a writer first Mm -hmm. and then she ended up becoming a cast member. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it, you know, I, I, when I guest host the show the first time, you know, Lauren always, you'll do church lady. So then I was yep. with, um, <laughs> it was Tina was assigned to me. So we did it on and off all week. And when she would write, she would do, well, I'm doing, you know. And then when I did it uh-huh. with Zeth later, he did the same thing. They both would <laughs> just do the church lady to me. So um, <laughs> Zeth, Tina, uh, in some ways, kind of reminds me of Steve Martin. Uh, yeah, just totally. And yep. the fountain of writing that she can do, she's yep. like, kind of shy in a sense, n- never ending. Yeah, very yep. sweet. They can perform very... their ass off, and the writers, they seem like they're good friends, right? Because they seem like they're brother and sister or something. Yeah, there are certain people that I email with every time they send me an email, I laugh out loud, you know. Yeah, um, those two are super funny. Um, you know, they're they're they're. Tina's just, she's unbelievably funny.
Well, does she come to you and say, "I want to do Thirty Rock"? Because you're on Thirty Rock, right? You were you. Um, no, the re- that the way that came about was they called they called me in. Lauren was like, "Get Marcy." You know, I I came in. Marcy, <laughs> you're just in a special room waiting for your orders. <laughs> yeah, Get Marcy, I we need something. Right next door. <laughs> and they're like. Uh, they told me the idea and they said, um, you know, we want Alec in this. And I was like, Ooh, that's going to be interesting to convince him to do a TV show. But then I read hey. the script and te- we, I, I, and, you know, I think because I was the Alec whisper rep, uh-huh. you understood uh-huh. Alec, the Alec, whisper. Alec Baldwin. Yeah. And I actually like I actually when I read the script, I was like, this, this, this is he's going to win every award. I thought it was so perfect for him mm-hmm. and so funny. And, um, and I had that was my job. I was like, I got it. So I had to um, convince him to do that. Also, you know, like a lot of people, what did you do in SNL? Well, as you know, the read through, there are 50 sketches and then they oh, yeah. go down yeah, to 13. You know, <laughs> what? Right? And then I have to convince the host to do them yeah (laughs) no one else is doing that job that was my job and that's difficult right because so much work it's really difficult because you i feel protective of the host that's my job i also have a job which is to make sure the show runs and lauren and jim and you know tina seth you know whoever's show running it um we get on, I have to look at the big picture, but I also have to make sure that the publicists and the managers and the agents and the host and the musical guests all want to come back. Cause I would always argue, you know, this we're inviting them. And then we, we basically right. tell them that they can't, we can't sabotage them. them. So it's like, a like, you know, it, 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 as you know, you, once you become on Monday and, and especially if the host is into it, you know, I get, I get attached. I got attached to some more than others. And so with Alec, um, you know, he's so smart and so funny and so brilliant. And when he, I, I knew the way to convince him to do that show and it worked. And also, I mean, well, it what, was just. Well, how did you convince him? What was your strategy? Well, well I mean, it's just a pilot. It, it, it obviously was so well written and perfect. And also, he he had a lot to do with making that show, even that pilot script. I I went over to his house and I read it with him, and uh-huh. I played the Tina part, and he played uh-huh. interesting Jackson. lemon, and and we just kept doing it, and um. You know, he didn't want to do t- and the whole thing. I kept that whole season. It was negotiating with Jeff Zucker, Mark Graboff, you know, because he would he just only wanted to do two episodes or three episodes. But yeah. the, the, the brilliant thing about Alec was that he really produced it, too. I mean, he it was his idea. Jane Krakowski, he really fought for her. And he is so funny and he's almost, isn't he almost sort of like a cast member on SNL? Can, yeah. Can I, I mean, can I interject a quick thing and I wonder yeah. if you were there, Marcy, but it was really struck me when Alec first hosted cause he was full movie star. Yeah, of course. And yeah. I remember I mean, he's was... just on the set with us and we're blocking or whatever. And I guess I kind of said something effective. What do you want to do? And he goes, well, I want to do this. Yes, you think I want right. to be on a submarine going, I, I captain the rest of my fucking life. Right. It was like, right. this guy was a full blown, ready to go. Give him a franchise. Full star. He could be James Bond. Full blown. Guy. And he, well, they gave, remember yeah. they gave him the fucking fugitive, which is a huge movie. Yes. They gave him Harrison the Ford's, Tom Clancy submarine ones. Yes. He could have done. And all he those. fell out. He, yeah. he fell out a fugitive to do a play. So he is like and, a cast yeah. member. He's between a guy who who's on the show. Con- well, yeah, he's like a, a second, uh, his own individual yeah, that, lane he, of a cast. He hosted in, I want to say like 91. I mean, it was mm-hmm. like one Marcy of Marcy was my third show and it yeah. was, uh, it went Corbin Burnson, yes. maybe Alec and then Dice and then Candace Bergen. But Alec was such a star. I think you set up a thing for us to see Hunt for Red October. Yeah. Yes. yes. And maybe Miami Blues. Yeah. Well, then did he, because he hosted. Maybe when he hosted again. Mm-hmm. He hosted. So that was his first time hosting. And he did Green Hill 8, which I always bring up. I thought it was so funny. Remember he's kissing everyone? Like, yeah. and he did the mimic. <laughs> yes. And he did. Yeah. And he was so funny. And then he got up for an Emmy for that. And, uh, That's right. and I remember Dennis Miller in the summer goes, Christ, Spudley, 
there's no fucking chance. You're up for an Emmy for absolutely no reason. You were there. It's your second show. Your name's on the credits. I go, yeah, but I'm up. I'm going to the Emmys, motherfucker. <laughs> motherfucker. Motherfucker. So, um, yeah, we, so your relationship yeah, anyway, with him is great. very, you know, you you are the Alec Horse Whisperer. I mean, and he, <laughs> Person Whisperer, and he won Emmys. He made a lot of money. And Alec, uh, yeah, hugely great successful show. show. Um, yeah, that, that show, the problem with SNL and that show is that once you've worked on those shows, it's very hard to work on something else. Because it just feels like molasses, right? So slow. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah. And, and I like it's, you know, it, it, it it's amazing. I mean, you know, the, the 30 Rock, like those read throughs were just you were crying laughing. Yeah. And um, yeah, I mean. And then there it was, was a single camera or a mix with an audience and single camera or single, no audience. So it gets a little that was tedious. thing. Alec used to say to me, just go. I know it like is it single camera is just go. Camera. It it, it <laughs> yeah. it's like a movie. Single camera is like a movie. movie yeah. And it was long, but what yeah. was nice uh, that there were so many people from SNL that I was doing both jobs. I was going from SNL. It was weird because I think there was a point where Everyone in SNL was like, where's Marcy? And everyone at 30 Rock said, where's Marcy? Like, I, yeah. well, I was never anyone. <laughs> what were your titles at that point then? It was executive um, I was, I was, producer, talent coordinator. Executive producer of um, 30 Rock, mm -hmm. which I had to fight for. Um, your book should be called Where's Marcy? <laughs> <laughs> or Get Get Marcy. Get Marcy. Get me Marcy now. Um, <laughs> did you ever hear this Jeff Daniels? Do you remember when Jeff Daniels yes. lost? Eyebrows? Have you did his you, eyebrow? Oh, when he oh, lost yeah. his eyebrows, was that it? Was that his second time? I was with him. That, that was one of the most terrifying. He the plaster. Oh, the, oh, the plaster had thing, and he. Oh yeah, I remember that story. On yeah. Friday night, yeah. and like they had to pour oil and take off his face, and I remember the next week. It was for the Jay Leno. Can we just note? for a second for the listeners to describe what that is? They put you in a head cast and you, you breathe through a straw in your nose. It's a life mask. A life yeah. mask. And yeah. you can't it's hear, see. It's yep. all over your mouth. You just have one little straw in your nose and it can be very claustrophobic. So they, they somehow it was the wrong mix of glue. We found out it wasn't it real plaster or something. It was real plaster. But what was crazy about it was George Mendez. Remember George Mendez uh -huh. who sort of had the lorn hair, yeah. you know, yeah. and, and he was, he was in charge of, you know, the studio. And I remember he came up to me and he was like, uh, I need to talk. Oh, no. I, just need to talk. I remember how scary oh. this was. And, and he said, he, he's like, oh, we have bad situation going on. You know, again, it was me because I'm the talent person. And mm -hmm. it, this was like midnight Friday night. It's, it's oh. tumbleweed. It's yeah, like Jim we Dan need a casket for uh, yeah. Jeff Daniels. Like, uh, come down. <laughs> I go into the makeup room and he's screaming. It, it was I've never seen. It was like I was like, he's this is like covered in plastic. Is, he, is it still, uh, it's still covered? And, and he's, was, you can hear I, him screaming, I, screaming and kicking and going insane. Get this off me. But he couldn't speak. You know, oh. and <laughs> I go running up. Aaron was outside of. Lauren's office and Jim. I was like, she's like, well, they're in there. I'm like, I just burst in. And I'm like, ah. Jeff Daniels, like, like it was his like, dying literally down there. And then I had to call Dr. Lamb. Dr. Lamb happened to be in the rainbow room. I feel like this was an episode on 30. Unreal. Rock. Um, Should have been 30 rock. And he was like in a bow tie. And then he came down and, Anyway, it was just, you know, it was that. I don't know. How did they how, get it uh, off? Dude, I, was there a chain? Dana, I, will, I think I remember. Yeah. They bent it back from his forehead and took an exacto and That's went down right. and cut off his eyebrows. And his eyebrows and, and all eyelashes. facial hair. And, yeah. and, and then it we, ripped we off. were deposed. I mean, it was a whole big thing. Like, what the fuck happened? Basically, somebody, why was there any. Was it a sabotage? It was. Well, that, remember, you remember that. That's what George yeah. Because I've never mm -hmm. heard of that happening. Like, how did they get the wrong mix? That the wrong I plaster? Don't know. Some it, you know, it. I don't know. I don't know. I remember I'll just Marcy. Say two they words, said Jim Carrey. No, I'm all I know, <laughs> that was when a they joke. said. All you know, I know you, is the next week it was Monday, and the show. You know, it was like yeah, nobody cared. But also, Jeff Daniels, to his credit, went through all that and then did the show the next day. He was unfucking and did great on the show. You can see his eyebrows are like painted in now. They said, because I got a life mask once and I was telling him, 
and they said, you know, when I put the holes in, they go, we're going to cover your ears. Mm -hmm. It's just plaster over your whole yeah. head. Yeah. They go, cover your ears, Eyes. cover your mouth, cover your nose. And they said, when we cover like the third one, you yeah. are going to freak out. And I said, why? They said, it's just, you can't. And I said, no, I'm very calm. I know they go, we're going to do it very slowly. And right when it covered, I go, take it off, take it off. Like <laughs> it, it's something about being buried alive. Yes. And they said, they said, if you cover this, don't, if you get sick or throw up, you will die because you can't, oh. it has, it has nowhere to go. And all I thought is Jeff Daniels, them going calm down because if he throws yeah, up, yeah. well, yeah. he died. I had one yeah. that didn't go wrong, but they had to do it twice. But the first time, I mean, I've had many of them, maybe eight or 10 in different situations, yeah. but yeah. they put it on. And for some reason, they're they're talking to each other and all you're hearing is, oh, it sounds like they're panicking. So then they needed to do another one. Guys, just talk calmly to it. Because when I hear, yeah. oh, we're going, you know, it's like, hand me that, hand me that. But yeah, it's it's a very, uh, it's a real mind fuck. It's a meditative oh thing to God. go. They're professionals. Everything's okay. It goes against all your human instincts. Wow. Okay. So you had a, you had a shoe thrown at your head, almost got blinded. Yeah. You saw a, a host almost die in your arms. Yeah. Um, who are you, other than Alec? Who are you the closest with out of all those uh, hosts? Do you still stay in touch with any of them? Um, I, I actually became close with Gwyneth Paltrow, Renee Zellweger. Okay. Um, uh, John Hamm because he's, he's cool. Well, he's yeah. sweetheart. You know, is it yeah. because, obviously because you're seeing them at at their most real and yeah. vulnerable when they're doing vulnerable quick changes sure. and they're exhausted. So then you get to know them and, and they're looking for you as a life raft. Like Marcy, is this normal? Am I okay? Yeah. So it's a very yeah, bonding. That, that is, that and is, you get them through it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I feel like I, I didn't, when I became a mom, uh, when I had kids, I was like, Oh, this is like when the hosts, Yeah. <laughs> I go with my kids, like they're hosts. You know, like <laughs> that's how your parenting style. <laughs> that's perfect. <laughs> so you knew what to do. If, you know, with accidents you know, and like, ER visits. When, when I'm like, mm, actually, they're right. You know, you like there is mm -hmm. that time between dress and air when the host is not in the the meeting, mm -hmm. and I'm like, ooh, that's the host's favorite sketch, and I already see that that's gonna go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I would fight and say, like, you can't do that. You know, I mean, right. there, there, there's stuff that goes on that, you know, behind. Right. This you, for hear the audience. The way, you hear the behind way everyone is talked about. What? You hear how, how everyone is talked about in the, the heat of the moment. Talk. Yes. There's I definitely no time feel like to be polite. I, you know? I was ever I had on. I could go in anywhere. There wasn't a there wasn't a place that I was not able to go in and know what was going on. And um. So when you, between dress and air, the, the thing that's always funny is I always would say to the host on Monday at the party, you are going to say this was the best week of your life. And yeah. they always oh. look at me. And at the party, they're always like, always. you were right. You know what I mean? Everyone reacts the same way. They they're all full have, of endorphins, full of yeah. like. Hey, let's it's tell the crowd that listens. We have a huge crowd. We have at least 2,700 listen. um, listeners. I heard this is a popular podcast. A few people have mentioned. Whoops. I've been mentioned. Oh, what are you talking you've about, You've been mentioned Mossy? on it. I never yeah. heard such a well, thing. Whoops. When people, when the host does a read-through, which we talk about a lot, but I yeah. think the one we don't really talk about is from the read-through, That everyone, everyone breaks. Yep. All the writers cast. Wednesday now, at 8. Now, yeah, we would Lauren, all go on, out to dinner. Yeah. Yeah. Lauren, the host. Let's say Lauren, Alec, uh, Downey, Smigel, maybe Franken. That's when I was there. Would all go in to pick the sketches. So they put no, them no. all on a card. No, 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 no. No. First, it was Lauren, Jim, me. Yeah. Oh, go then, ahead. At, like it, it, the host goes in later. There's a pre-host meeting pre -host. that you oh like well, how are we going to break it to the host that this and, one and then some writers love. and producers are asked in like lauren would like to see you yeah. and he's like could you make right. that sketch shorter or could you get you right. uh, take out that entrance so he's producing then what happens it's dangling yeah and there was always like a host would always say like what uh you know i thought i was going to do a wayne's world uh they yeah. never and i'm like and then Shaw. <laughs> Yeah, there was always like that thing of, uh, you know, when Lauren would be, someone had to do a Wayne's, you know, you'd have to. Like, like oh, a host would come in and say, I want to be on blank. Well, there would be that. The sketch. There would also be the, wait, what on Wednesday? It was like, you know how long Wednesday is. Well, where, yeah. what happened to that sketch yeah. that they, 
So um, that would always be like, I'd have to go and be like, uh, he's mentioning this that, you know, yeah. didn't happen. So that there was a pre-meeting before the meeting. Oh, meeting. yeah, that's right. And the host gets a vote when he's in there. Obviously, they're in it. So they say, what do you think of this? What do you think of this? We thought this would go up early in the mm-hmm. show. And then someone would say, like, I wrote that one thing with Tom Hanks, Subway Surfing. It wasn't the greatest, but he liked it. Right. So they go, it's all negotiations. They're like, we'll give you that. Right. We'll give it a chance. Now it's already dangling because it might go the wrong way and it's not that strong. Right. And when we did it dress her, so when Tom was on, we joked about it because it was bombing. We knew in the middle of it, we were looking at each other going, it's over, yeah, but it's we gave it everything. It and then, yeah. and Keep then they just off. move it to the other side of the board. When you walk in and you go, it didn't I even know. Happen. Everyone, it, we're not even going to discuss it. Everyone comes in at 11, 10. The show starts in 20 minutes. There's yeah. 60 of us in Lauren's office. And you come in and you look at the board and you look what's off off the board. Still, yep. the card is up there. But you you yep. had to be the bearer of either good news or bad news all week with a host. Yeah. And did you have a tactic with that? You'd say, but this is in. You soften them first. And this is going great. This one probably, I think, is cut. Or How did you? I, mean, I guess you're skilled at that. Um, I think that you, I, 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 I was so much a part of the week and especially with Jim, you know, I kind of, I I knew where we were headed Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. also I feel like I'm, maybe I'm too honest and I would never lie to a host unless I, I, I just, I don't, I'm trying to think of, there must've been times where I'm like, okay, I have to. Um, convince them to do right. Well. Like Lauren might say to me, go in and find out it's fly on the wall or fly on the window, you know, like mm-hmm. which one is it? And um, uh, I would, I, 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 I think that those were times where, I don't know. I think I'm just direct and straight. Well, I don't think you lie because there's no, it's going to bite you in the ass later because they're yeah, going to figure it out. Thing and also, um, well, I think Marcy, I'm going to interject this. You were very popular <laughs> yeah. because yeah. you were so real, and that's why you're fun to have dinner with or talk. And to. you could be blunt, and yeah. you could be just honest. And so I think yeah. you had a good skill set for that particular part of your resume on Saturday Night Live of dealing you, with vulnerable yeah. people. But yeah. I, I still, once someone is a host and you see them later out in the real world, there is just a bonding there. There is you know. a huge bond. I know. I always said like, it's amazing. You were just talking about Tom Hanks, but um, even people that, you know, I mean, they know you both, you're famous, but I, I see people whether it's the Golden Globes or on mm-hmm. the street, Marcy, like they, oh, yeah. I, mm-hmm. I recently went to a, a thing, a, a like a screening for Nicole Kidman, um, uh, the I Love Lucy, and she did the. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, mm-hmm. And I walked up to her. I brought Mary Ellen with me, the photographer at SNL, who's a good friend of mine. And I, I walked up to Nicole. I hadn't seen her in a really long time. And I said, I, I said, I don't know if you remember me. She's like, of course I remember you. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> She said that week you got me through that week. I mean, I could not believe that she remembered me, but I think for hosts mm-hmm. that that week is fucking intense. Oh, the, the, think- yeah. Well, we no, it's fucking intense. It's fucking amazing. <laughs> These motherfuckers come in like they're the top of the mark, and we got. But it is amazing to be a part of all of it and know how the whole thing works. You know, mm-hmm. I'll I'll say that. And David will back me up in the very first, even before we started our first podcast, just aggregating uh, people to come on this mm-hmm. show. And you were one of the first that popped in my head like, well, Marcy Klein, because she's she's connected, yeah, was, yeah. you'll, you know, by by so many uh, situations that um, everything is in it from when I was there. I mean, who got to work with them? Us, then Will Farrell. You got to see the switching from Dana and all those guys to all of us. And then Will Farrell, Tina, and Jimmy. I missed like, it. Well, you guys, it was weird because when it was so much smaller and, and I was so close with all of you, and then you guys left. And then, like, Norman, Lori, Joe, and Jim, and, like, everyone was leaving. And I'm like, oh, God. And then I'm in my 30s. Then I was in my 40s. And I'm like, every, it, but then yeah. all my friends live in LA. 
You know, it, hmm. it, it's, I miss. And there's 25 cast and you're like, I don't even think I've met anyone, everyone this year. So you're as close to like Lauren, you know, has 45 years of being a yeah. teacher in school and then his former classmates go and he sees them around yeah. campus, you know? And so you right. had uh, your own experience with that. Like, oh, now I'm in the Will Ferrell or here's Anna Gasta yep. or, you know, now it's Bill Hader. And then you, it, I, you met me when I was like doing everything. And then yeah. I became in charge mm -hmm. and that's a whole other thing. And like we, we were talking about Farley and I remember when he hosted and I had to call everyone. I knew things were bad. I mean, you yeah. know, I just was like, he could not make it through this. And everyone was so excited. He was there. And I remember Tracy Morgan and I feel like Jim Brewer, were they, were they, um, they, I think they shared an office and everyone was like, it was a Tuesday night and Farley wanted to go out. And <laughs> I called the entire cast into the talent department. And I said, you cannot go out with him. You, you cannot, I just knew something bad was going to happen. And, um, they, there, there was, I felt more like a mom. Like, I don't feel like you, you guys didn't know me in that role. You know, yeah. I'm younger, mm -hmm. I feel like, but then I became the mom of everyone. Well, you're like one of us. We're all yeah. around the same age. We're all younger like and jumping the, around. The interns, you know, I'd be like, they can't come to the party. <laughs> you know, like they're uh, young, you know. I like, remember uh, getting that little ticket, like you would slip every, all of us that said where the party was. And then during I, would, I was the, the show, of the party. And then yeah. I would seat people like Dana's table, and yeah, I'd have to have like someone in my office. I'm like, find out how many people David has. Is right, Dana, Dana, he's gonna Dana sit with put spade with Sandler, and yeah, they can have right. a plus one each. And There's then a four then top. Would all hang out, and sit, and then you know, and then it 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 running a party at one in the morning and I know nothing about running, but then eventually everyone was so nice. And that's a thing. Like everyone is supportive of each other. So no one ever got mad. Where's my table? You know what I mean? There was, and the party that. would kind of get up and running like at 2 AM. Cause the, the good yeah. nights were at 1 AM. We get in the cars, maybe it's during the winter. So it's like starting yeah. a party at 2 AM. When was the last time you yeah. started a party at 2 AM after 13 hour work day? I don't go out after nine. That's why I left. <laughs> I couldn't, I never saw my kids. I like on Sunday, I was completely out. Zombie. Yeah. It's yeah. just, and I, and, yeah, it's like and, jet lag. It's like, it, it totally like jet lag. Yeah. And you're just, and I'm still recovering as Jim Downey says, <laughs> like he's still recovering. From I those still days. recovering from the 15th anniversary. I'm still. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that one. The 15th. What about the 40th? Now the 50th. Are you going to, I at, am. you think the 50th, that's going to happen, Sickening. right? The 50th. Seems, Seems like surreal. I, why not? Why no not? hunk. Uh, no. <laughs> all right. We better wrap it up with her, Dana. This went faster than we thought, Marcy. Thank you. I love you guys. Well, I miss you. When you're we out We could do here, a 12 parter with Marcy. Tomorrow and Jimmy Fallon. There's a, there's some thing like some screening of his. Of, of who? Oh, great. Ja I hope Adam Sandler remembers me. He will. He's on the oh, road right now doing fool. gigs. Why do you mean I'm know. not going to remember you? Sorry. Just... Iraqi Pete. Iraqi, Iraqi Pete. Marcy <laughs> Klein. Yeah, this is, uh, well, season three, we're having you back because uh, there's too many stories, but uh, yeah, it's uh, okay. it's so so much fun to chat She's with you. She's the glue. Look us up Thanks. when you're in LA. We'll go to that crazy okay. restaurant that you put your yes. phone in a satchel and be there for yes. seven hours. And this time, Faye Dunaway better show up. <laughs> bye. All right, bye, guys. Bye, bye. Hey, what's up, flies? What's up, fleas? What's up, people that listen? <laughs> we want to hear from you and your dumb questions. Questions, ask us anything. Anything you want. You can email us at flyonthewall at cadence13.com. We're going to do a Q&A question. I got to first say my code is fucking off the hook. If I may be so present well, with my thing. I didn't know thing. Sears still had a boys department. <laughs> I'm trying, sorry. That's, the code that's is... True.
the word bumping hey, has been thrown around. a bit around. of a NASA vibe over Fucking there. ridiculously. Apollo 17. Cooler than fuck pie. But I don't want to talk about it. I don't want to over talk what about it. What color do you call that? Taupe. Yeah, you know, it's a great question. Yeah, taupe. Is it taupe? I don't think so. I said olive and then I said gray. Oh, it has an olivey taupe. Yeah. And it's got a diametric. You can't buy this. You can't buy that shape. But you can live on the moon with it. Yeah. That's where I should go. It looks go. very astronauty to me. Thanks. Your new nickname is Buzz Spade. <laughs> Buzz Plowwood. That's my porn name. <laughs> Buzzed Spade. Buzz Spade is but more enough like about it. Yeah. You know, neat. Uh, Hello. Hi, <laughs> rat, he's got his rat tattoo he had on. Ah. <laughs> I like that. I want to tell you about the question. <laughs> Don't that, tell an accent. Or an that's accent. a good color. All right. Get, let your question. Here's here. Dana reading a question. Right, I'm going to read a question. From Simon F. Mm -hmm. Etherington. Hi, Dane and David. The show is great. <clears throat> Can't get enough. <laughs> we always add that part. I <laughs> listen to the entire... Hey, this is in your handwriting. <laughs> I listen to the entire Farley uh, tribute twice. That's nice. All nine hours. It seems like when you get to SNL, you get a wooden desk, a yellow legal pad, and mm -hmm. Bernie Brillstein as your manager. <laughs> How is that seemingly everyone on the show ended up with Bernie as their manager? Or am I just imagining that he was everyone's manager? Maybe you could give a little more insight into- It's a how, racket. Into how so many cast members ended up working with also, Bernie. Also, Lauren. Sharon. Etherkin. Lauren's with Bernie. So what it was, Ether, I think yeah. at the beginning, you would know more, Dana. He had a management company. Sharon, Ether- Simon. Simon. Oh, shit. Okay. I don't, I don't have my <laughs> I said, big boy glasses on. Excuse me. Sir. Where are you cheaters? Excuse me. Sir, 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 sir. I should never drink before these. I'm going to go to write Simon Etherington. So Bernie. Simon. Simon. Was enough of Simon. Fuck that guy. Yeah, but that was the guy who wrote us the question. I know. I don't care about him anymore. <laughs> uh, I took his question. I came Why are you so mad at Simon? I don't know. He's All being a, a dick. All your rage is coming out. Uh, Bernie handled Belushi, Aykroyd. Lorne. It's so funny to handle both sides of the table. Bernie was an old-timey manager. Yeah. He, he was probably, when I met him, like 41. He seemed like he was 70, and then when he was 70, he seemed 70. Yeah, he looked like Santa Claus. He looked big. exactly like Santa Claus, literally. White hair, white And beard. he did manage all the original cast. He just got in there, and I think Lorne was the first client, and then everyone Lorne. went with Bernie, and then by the time I came along, Bernie had hired Brad Gray and Mark Gervis. What do you <laughs> To be some hey, of his handsome. partners, and we had Sandy Warnick in there. Mm -hmm. And um, Brillstein uh, Company is a company you'll hear about a lot. He has so many SNL people, you're right, are connected to it. Me, Sandler, Dana, Kevin, Neil and Dennis Miller, Norm, Farley, Lovitz, uh, Schneider for a while. Bill Maher. Uh, who was that? Bill Maher, Ed O'Neill. Bill Maher, Ed O'Neill, yeah. A lot of SNL people, a lot of just famous people. But, uh, they always had sort of a monopoly on SNL, which is great because they know Lauren so well. They know the negotiations so well. They know it if, became a farm league yeah. ecosystem when Brad or Bernie would say, I think this guy could be good because he talked like that. Yeah. You know? And then they'd sign you and then now they're going to, it's all, it's beneficial for everybody. Uh, and, and Bernie was just a taste of old show business. Like I said, he had a big kid. voice. Yeah. And a lot of people do better impressions of him than me. But he's like, Sandler used to call people from our office. We'd answer fan mail and he'd just call as Bernie <laughs> and talk to someone, some kid Brian as Bernie. Bernstein. This is Bernie, Adam's manager. And uh, <laughs> we just answer fan mail and we were bored and just call the number and ask for some kid and then talk to him. He was one of those guys, he leaned into me when he first met me. He goes, you got a face for television. A face for television? Yeah. You do? Yeah, I don't know. I had a Disney face for a while before life beat the shit Were you, out of me. Have you ever been described cherubic. as cherubic? Uh, That's what I was going to say. Whoa. Uh-oh, uh don't we do a thing? Abracadabra. Oh, I got jinx. legally carded by a mentally healthy person to buy a beer at age 53. I got me. carded. Honestly, I told you this, Heather. Yeah. A month. Uh, like it was. Where was it? Was it my own show or something? I went somewhere and they go, I, no, it was at a, it was a Chili's. She goes, I gave my credit card. No, I ordered a drink because I have a problem. <laughs> well, you don't order drinks too much. Come on, fans. Let's I had to because it was nighttime. Okay. So, well, Simon's so she goes, I know who you are and I'm a huge fan, but I have to see your ID. Why? 
I don't understand. Legally. So I give it to her and she goes, some quick math, carry the four. And then she goes, okay. Why did we do that? What uh, if she was like, so you weren't in grownups when you were one? I've seen I, what a 90 she... year old man get carded at a liquor store. <laughs> <laughs> He's like literally. I can't even see. We it. have to. It's just the it's law. It's the law. Even with the fuzz on the chin, they tag you. I go. You okay with this? <laughs> Light a match. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, how, is that, that how did we answer the? Question? I don't know what the question is. Oh, yeah. well, Bernie. Oh, Bernie yeah. Brillstein, great guy. Everyone. It was an ecosystem of farm league team of uh, being with Brillstein. Has a book out if you want to read it, and it's very interesting about all that stuff. Yeah, yeah he has his own book out. Great guy, Bernie. Loved him. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Simon. This has been a podcast presentation of Cadence Thirteen. Please listen, then rate, review, and follow all episodes. Available now for free wherever you get your podcast. No joke, folks. Fly on the Wall has been a presentation of Cadence 13, executive produced by Dana Carvey and David Spade, Chris Corcoran of Cadence 13, and Charlie Finan of Brillstein Entertainment. The show's lead producer is Greg Holtzman with production and engineering support from Serena Regan and Chris Basil of Cadence 13. 